So just as some addition, we'll have two uh, more subjects. The first one will be a short um, discussion of clock generation. So where does the clock actually come from? The easiest way to generate a clock is by using a ring oscillator. So if we take a bunch of inverters, an odd number of course, let's say three inverters, and we connect them back and forth, we have zero, one, zero causes a one, that means that this becomes a zero, and this becomes a one, and then this becomes a zero, right, and so forth. And we have this type of an oscillation that makes some sort of a nice uh, clock um, signal. However, um, this type of ring oscillator is really, um, really susceptible to process vari variations, process voltage and temperature variations, and we want some sort of a frequency that we know about because we have to meet our setup uh, and hold delays and we have to meet our spec. Okay, so therefore clocks are generally generated off chip using a crystal, okay, and some sort of oscillation circuit, and that's because crystals have a very nice, uh, um, they can make a very nice and stable frequency. But um, usually we can only use one crystal and uh, one off-chip clock and that's because they take up a lot of room in the, on the board and so forth and so we get one single frequency and we may need several frequencies on the clock and not only that the frequency is usually limited to around 100 megahertz because it's hard to drive that clock onto the chip so what we usually need to do is have on on-chip local clock generation um, usually using what we call a PLL or a DLL so we'll take this external clock which is made from the crystal and we'll have to have some sort of local clock generator usually like a PLL and then we'll distribute it on the clock as we discussed throughout this whole lesson so let's discuss local clock generation so there are two big problems that we have with these external uh, generally uh, uh, externally generated clock first first of all frequency is limited okay so if we can only bring up to say 100 megahertz and we need a 1 gigahertz clock we need a clock multiplier and clock multiplication is not uh, very trivial we usually need some sort of analog type of a circuit to do it second of all um, we don't know anything about the clock phase and if we need to have communication right if we have uh, two chips that need to talk to each other then we have a problem communicating because uh, we have no clue about the clock phase that gets to the two of them okay so um, to do this we use a PLL to fix this problem so we have our crystal oscillator here and it drives the, this uh, type of a clock uh, 100 maybe a bit more than that megahertz uh, and it gets into the PLL the PLL will uh, multiply the clock and it will provide it into our system and it may divide it or something like that to bring it out to a reference clock um, now we have some sort of path that goes between our system and between uh, uh, another chip and what we need to do is we need to have a path between them but these are asynchronous they don't know or uh, they don't know anything about each other so this clock divider will go into the PLL will fix the phase between them and that will enable us to have a synchronous path between the two okay so that will uh, fix the phase between them and then we can um, uh, we can communicate between these two types of systems okay um, if uh, clock multiplication is not required, we can use a delayed lock loop instead. It's a more simple solution that just delays the clock in order to um, uh, fix the, the phase difference. So how does a PLL work? So this is a kind of a, uh, a schematic uh, uh, description of a PLL. So we get some sort of input clock, we may divide it, um, and we have a return path from our output clock that also comes into it, and we detect the phase difference between them with a phase detector. Okay. This phase detector is driven into a loop filter, which converts the phase error into a control signal, a voltage, and the voltage is driven into an oscillator or a voltage-controlled oscillator, a VCO. Um, so depending on this error between the two, which is con uh, converted into a voltage, it makes the uh, frequency of the oscillator changed. This is driven into these clock buffers, which then drive it back here, and this um, cont it continues until we lock on the same phase phase and there is no phase error and that's where the new output clock that is uh, at the size of n divided by m so we get multiplication as well in this way uh, a dll is the same principle but instead of changing the frequency it just delays the clock until the phase is equal 